everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. How you guys doing? We finished the Fa La La quilt from uh, Villa Rosa Designs and I had a lot of fun with it. Let me show you. I got it all done and I've already uh, gotten it off the long arm. I'm, I just need to trim it up and get it. Um, ooh, I'm going to have to go all the way back here get it bound. So there it is. Very happy with it. I had a really good time making this. This is a great quilt for beginner quilters. So if you're a beginner quilter and you're interested in seeing uh, tips and tricks on how to get points to meet at the top of the tree block and how to get your lines to go straight down the side like this, I tell you guys how to do that. And in a post I had done, I don't know if it was a Facebook post, because we have a Facebook group. Uh, it's a Power Tools with Thread Facebook group, if you're interested. We're quilters and machine embroiderers, for the most part. And I had talked about using a busy backing. And if you are new to quilting, that's kind of a little trick that can help if you are new to long arming. Um, if you choose a backing that is busy like this, then any little issues you ever might have will be gone. Also, if you're going to do the Amelie Scott edge to edge to finish your quilt in your embroidery machine, a busy backing is another uh, good idea to do that. But you guys, this was a first for me here. I used red thread. This is called Christmas Tree Doodles from Urban Elements. I'll link to it below. And it's a, I sized it to a 10 inch block and I used red on the front and green on the back. That was a first. So I really had to play around with the tension before um, I got to stitch them with it. And a lot of quilters do this. I just um, take a scrap, especially like a white, and I will do a whole bunch of adjustments and get all my stuff, um, I'll stitch it a whole bunch on the side. And this is gonna be trimmed off, of course, but this is where I do this, and then whenever I have a bobbin change, I do it again. So, didn't have to do much testing at all on that one. I just kind of make star uh, points or a figure eight, but that way I can check for eyelashes. So, all right, so I got that done. Some folks in our Facebook group had made uh, suggestions about maybe doing an applique star on the top of the tree, uh, maybe doing an angel, or doing some kind of uh, embroidery designs in the ornaments on that quilt. And I think that's just a wonderful idea. I was, I have thought about doing it, but honestly, by the time, <laughs> you know, because this thing went all week. And I was, uh, you know, shooting video in the afternoon and editing in the mornings and trying to get it out in the afternoon and that kind of thing. So um, it was, uh, it was a, it was a busy week, but had a nice weekend. And we went to another cattle show on Saturday. Our friend's granddaughter was showing again. She got one first place uh, in the class, which is, which means the weight, and um, she's showing black. Cross, I think. A couple of you are cattlemen and you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I also, I'd shown you this before. I finished bringing home the Christmas tree quilt. This is from Lori Holt. Let me hold this up again for my new subscribers. And hey, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that very much. Also, one of the best things and easiest things you can do to help my channel is to give my videos a thumbs up. So I appreciate that very much. All right, so here is bringing home the Christmas tree. This is a Lori Holt pattern from vintage her vintage Christmas book. I finished this. Well, not really, to didn't totally finish it. I have to do borders around the edges. That still needs to be done, and that's why this did not go on the long arm yet. So I got that one done. And a long time ago, long, long time ago, I got this, this is a 108 backing, and I think I got it from Connecting Threads. I've shown it in some videos, but y'all, it's been a year, maybe more, and I'm going to go ahead and use this as the backing for bringing home the Christmas tree. I had it in my stash, 
and why not, right? Whoops. So I, I had purchased a brown and this one and I had like a beige or a white and I might have had a red but I think I might have used it already on another quilt. So anyway, this is going to be the backing for bringing home the Christmas tree. I think it'll be perfect. Also, I finished my Hawaiian Santa Table Runner. We did the Santa Table Runner sew along back in September and I finished him up. He had yellow borders and I had a batik just and I just put that on the back and made it a little bit longer, did a self fold binding. Got it all done. So that's finished. I am enjoying doing these sew alongs cuz I'm getting projects done. <laughs> That's nice. But I just, I'm very pleased with how this, oh look, he's got fuzz on him. Sorry, let me show him. I didn't realize he had fuzz on him. Show him without the fuzz now. So I did these on Spanky back here. That's, uh, and he's named Spanky after the little rascals. And I enjoyed that so much that I am naming all of my machines after little rascals. So my luminaire is Darla, of course, and my king quilter is Alfalfa, and my brother PQ1500. I can't decide between Butch or Petey. <laughs> I kind of like Butch because he's pretty tough. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was going to do some, like, simply applique, but that application that program simply applique is a program that takes uh, designs that you can out of you can do them in your scan and cut or create them in brother canvas and it will take those designs simple designs and turn them into applique files with a placement stitch a tack down stitch and a final stitch well simply applique is a um, it is a module inside of BES 4 and this came with Spanky. It was part of the deal that came with Spanky. So I was, you know, wanting to mess with Simply Applique today on my computer, and I don't have it because I got a new computer. So Simply Applique is on the computer at the coast, and so I need to get this installed. And this is the first time I've ever seen, uh, there's no CD in here. It comes with um, USB sticks and some fobs and things like that. So. I haven't installed it yet. I gotta play with that. I'm excited to play with that. I think that's kind of neat. I'm still doing most of my embroidery editing and everything in Embrilliance. To me, that is just the simplest. The only thing I'll use this for probably is for its uh, ability to do the simply applique. So, because I know how to do that, and Embrilliance doesn't do that. So, anyway. Uh, Missouri Star had a daily deal the other day. It was called In the Pink 40 Karat Gems. So these are Jelly Roll strips. And it was a deal. So I went ahead and picked it up. Um, you know, Valentine's Day is coming. And then the last time I had one of these, it was so nice to have it on hand because I had a friend of mine who was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I did a jelly roll race and used up that set of jelly roll strips. So I um, needed to replace those. God forbid anybody else gets that diagnosis. But uh, if they do, I've got one handy or Valentine's Day quilt. And what else? This was on back order for me at Fat Quarter Shop. It is called Cozy Christmas White Sparkle Yardage. Y'all, this is so cute. I love this background fabric. I won't use it as a backing. I will use it as a background, but it has multiple color little stars. Do you see up close? Very, very pretty stuff. I will put a link to this below if they still have it. So I got, I got four yards, so that's pretty big. That'll make a pretty good quilt. But if I wanted to do another one of the quilts out of, matter of fact, this, this fabric is exactly what is in the background of this vintage Christmas quilt from Lori Holt. That is the background fabric. See that? That's probably where I got the idea that I wanted it. So if I decide to do another 
quilt from Lori Holt's book. Because I just love putting that, bringing home the tr Christmas tree quilt together. I thought that was so much fun. When you're, when you're putting shapes together like that, it's like doing a puzzle. A little bit different than traditional quilt box, but I thought it was pretty cool. And then uh, my last video, a couple of you had asked me about that panel behind me. I picked up that fall panel. I just think it's so cute. I had picked it up at the Christmas Goose in Vegas. It was on Durango in Vegas. But I had it in my stash, and I was like, well, I need to do something. I needed to put something up on the doors, what I needed to do. But, um, yeah, that's where I got that, and I will put the information to it below. But it's a pretty old panel. I don't know if, they, you'll, if it's still around. But what else has been going on? I'm getting ready, I think... Probably tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and do some more Kimberbell Christmas Nativity ornaments. I really want to get those finished for the season coming up. Oh, I wanted to get this done today and make a video so I could show you guys. My grandson, my youngest grandson is going to turn four close to the end of the month. And um, <laughs> y'all won't believe what I made for him. Hey. What four-year-old doesn't need a snake? <laughs> Look at him. Is he great? <laughs> is he great? Oh, my gosh. He's, um, I don't know how long he is. Let me see. I just, he's 55, 56 inches long. I, um, I ordered a fleece blanket off of Amazon, and it came in, and I cut two six-inch wide pieces, and then he's got half inch seam allowances in here. I just appliqued, um, this is actually from a pair of old sweatpants that I had. I just cut his little pupils. And then I put the um, eyeball, that's fleece. And this is some old, his tongue is some old cuddle that I had around here. So I think this is just fabulous. I, I love this guy, he's great. But. Yeah, so, you know, I told my son, because, you know, I didn't want to order anything from Amazon and have it be in personal. My husband says, he needs a pointed tail. I'm like, eh, he's fine. So, he'll probably just, you know, hit the dog with it or terrorize his sister or something like that. <laughs> you guys, this is fabulous. I can't wait. I, I'm sure there are, there's going to be a, I want one, where's mine? At least I hope so. But I wanted to get him, want you to see him. And then, uh, I did not have a pattern for this at all. I did not. I just kind of winged it. And I actually used, I have a, uh, I have a, a pressing ham that is a long tube. It's meant to go inside of a sleeve. And that's what I use. It's only, that's only this long, of course. But that's what I used as an idea of how to do, to round his face and, and everything and see where his eyes would fit so I just and everything is done with zigzag stitches because uh, yeah you know it needed a strong stitch and I left the opening right here on the side so he was easy to fill from the middle toward both ends and then I used a poly uh, navy blue doing a ladder stitch here on the side nice strong ladder stitch uh, so hopefully he'll make it through uh, maybe till Christmas we'll see <laughs> so, but yeah I wanted to show you guys that so I'll do maybe I'll do a blog post and tell you how I made him up so anyway all right you guys that's all I had to talk to you about today again I really appreciate your subscriptions and I appreciate your thumbs up on my videos and we will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.